Good morning. Glad you're here. Let me tell you, what you're thinking has far more power than you could ever realize. As a person thinks, the Bible says in Proverbs 23, 7, so are they. In other words, you can't change what you're thinking on a continuous basis and not be that person, not have that identity. If I'm mad all the time, I come across mad. If I'm angry all the time, I come across angry. If I'm happy all the time, I come across happy. I can't be one way and be another way as a hypocrite without sooner or later it telltelling on who I really am. Now, I can't tell you how important this is for your mental health. After studying psychology for years and psychiatry and all these things with counseling folks through the years, one thing sticks up. And that thing is this. The more a person thinks of themselves and the less they think of others, the more unstable they become. In fact, I would go so far, and I can't say this medically, but I think their mental health, dementia and all those things accelerate faster when someone is thinking about themselves. Because if my whole world is in here and it does not reflect what's out there, then I become mentally unstable. Now, how do we fix that? We fix it with this because all of us have the temptation to be I'm worried about my bills. I'm worried about how I look. I'm worried about what it's going to sound. I'm worried about if this person's going to do this. I'm worried about, but all of it comes back to me, 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 me. Matthew, Mark, and Luke both included when Jesus said, if somebody does not deny themselves, they cannot be my disciple. Not maybe you can be my disciple, but cannot be my disciple. Why? It's an impossibility to be thinking about yourself all the time and to be learning the ways of Christ and sharing the ways of Christ. Because you'll be learning the ways of Stacy, or whoever you are, and yourself, and you'll be thinking and sharing and talking about that. You may, haven't you avoided some people because you know what they're going to say? Oh, it's terrible, it's terrible, it's terrible. This person's done me this one, and then you're thinking, oh my goodness, why did I even ask how you are? Because it's all about me. Now, you remember when John said something, John the Baptist, that was very profound. He said, I must decrease, but he must increase. If you make that a way of life, I must decrease my thinking about myself. And I must increase my thinking about Christ. Delighting in Him. Praising Him. Praise is the key. You wake up in the morning, you're happy you woke up. You're praising God you woke up. A lot of people didn't. You're praising God you had two feet. And two legs to put on the floor. My father was a brittle diabetic. Had one foot cut off and one leg cut off. He couldn't put two feet on the floor. All the things that you, you walk through the kitchen, you open the refrigerator, there's a gallon of milk in there. You thank you for that. I look over there. I've got some mice. I praise God I got a little mouse in that trap. I don't have to, I got one little booger less. You see, there's, I, I can be thankful about so many things or I can be complaining about all of these things. All of these thoughts pop into our heads. Listen to this. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we don't war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God through the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments in everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity. When somebody is going out of a prison... They have this locked-in chute that searches them or whatever, and they get them ready to go free. I want you to do this. When you start thinking about something, check it out. Is that something I should really be thinking about? Or is that something that I should deny and let go? God wants you thinking about Him, seeking and searching for Him, and He will bless you. Not you, but God. Have a great day.